Hey guys, and welcome to this Friday's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Today we have six questions we want to answer together. The first one is basically a question about, hey, I only have the cut and the edit page, but I saw you have more pages. How can you open this? Very simple. Then another guy was asking like, hey, this one feature doesn't work on my iPad. So basically I had a video, this one here, it wasn't working on his side. The next question, I'm not getting that white button to fade. It's a easy option to fade something in. I will talk about this in this video. Hey, thanks, this is a brilliant, but those pages disappear when you restart. I'm talking again about all of the pages in DaVinci Resolve and he's asking, is there a way to get an on-screen iPad keyboard? Very interesting question and thought. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. Then how do you add GIF pictures to DaVinci Resolve on the iPad? I will show you how this works today. And then the last question is basically, he is considering to buying DaVinci Resolve Studio, but he's not sure if he should buy it or not for the iPad because it's not complete done. It's not all features ready yet. I will tell you a little bit of what I think about this in the end of the video. So let's come to the first question and the fourth question because they are kind of the same. So number one, many people now in the last couple of months come to my channel and they don't understand that we have all of the pages. Like on the desktop, you have all of the pages in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. This was one of my first videos that I made back in Christmas of 2022 when DaVinci Resolve came out. And so you just have to come to my channel and when you're here on my channel, you just have to scroll down here and, and there is a playlist, DaVinci Resolve iPads, tips, tricks, and tutorials. And the first videos is all about unlock the pages, unlock the pages if you don't have a keyboard and you wanna use a Bluetooth keyboard because now this comes to the, to the other question, it was a very good idea that you had, but is there another way to open an on-screen iPad keyboard? Do we have to use a Bluetooth keyboard? And the, the problem is the following. So let's say here, this is DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, right? If you click anywhere where you can write, and I detach my iPad from my, from my um, Magic Keyboard, I have an on-screen keyboard. But the problem is not that you cannot have always an on-screen keyboard. The problem is that this on-screen keyboard doesn't have the keys that we need. We need option, we need command. It's not there. So I, I spend a lot of time at the beginning figuring this out. And the easiest workaround is to actually use your smartphone with a Bluetooth keyboard on it. And then you can connect it with your iPad and you can use the smartphone as a keyboard. And the video where I show this is basically this video here. And it works on Android and also on iPhone. Second question, he was watching this video. I cut this in two seconds and it wasn't working on his machine. What we are talking about is this feature here. In the cut page, if you come to this icon, you have an icon, it's called detect scene cuts. So you can give DaVinci a video and it will automatically recognize cuts. So you don't have to make the cuts yourself if it recognizes those cuts. And it will just work like that. You have to click this and it's gone. So I looked into this. First reason why you don't see this, it could be that you just don't have 18.5. If you still have an older version, because that feature or the, uh, the possibility to click this came in 18.5. So if you don't have 18.5, you will not see it. Then the second thing I was thinking about, okay, I have the studio version. Maybe this is only part of the studio version, but I have the not studio version on my desktop and I have the same feature there. So I'm thinking it should be available for free one as well. But let guys, let me know if you with the free version can see this feature or not, because that could the second, could the second reason be that it's only available in the studio version because it uses the neural engine of DaVinci Resolve. But I think it's free. Oh yeah, and it's not, the other problem could be that you were just working in the edit page. You don't have that in the edit page. You have to be in the cut page. Oh, next question, I'm not getting that white button to fade. So what she's talking about is basically, if we come here to the edit page, in one video, I showed you that you can very fast with this little white thing here, create a fade in or fade out effect on your clip without going to transitions and everything. But the thing is, it only works on the edit page. So same thing like before, on the cut page, it doesn't work. So one problem could be you were working in the cut page and it's only available in the edit page. Also. If you have a mouse, like I now have, you can just hover over and you will see the white thing. Of course, if you only have a pencil, but it still works, you can go with the pencil to the end and basically grab this one here and you can move it. And it works on both ends with every clip. How do you add GIF pictures in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad? In one of our Friday videos, I explained you how you can create GIF files, but it's a very good question because many editing pro programs and software still today have a problem running GIF files inside because GIF files is like this file that is looping itself. 
So how do you, like, I understand, how do you even show that it's looping itself all the time, right? But there's a workaround. I show you now how I will do this on my iPad so I don't have to go to any other program or any other laptop. So there's a website, it's called Giphy.com. You get a lot of uh, GIF files here on that website. So let's say we have Pikachu here and I wanna use this in my video in DaVinci Resolve. So number one, how can you even download stuff here from Giphy.com because you can't do it like on the desktop, right click and download. But there's one way, you can click here this icon so now you see all of this. But if you now longer press here, you have this pop-up window and you can say save image. So now we have the image here in our photos and it's the Pikachu, it's a GIF file. I show you what's the problem is if you come here to DaVinci and you import now from your photos, you can select it, but it's just not appearing. It's not working. So GIF files don't work, but the workaround is this. Come to your browser and now search for GIF to MP4 converter and then you will get a list with different GIF and MP4 converters. The one that worked now on my machine is this one, Cloud Convert, and I can come in here, select a file. So I select this one now here from my photos. That's the Pikachu to MP4. Just make sure it says MP4, that's fine. Convert. Now it's making the magic, processing, blah, blah, blah. And then you have the video file of that one GIF. I can now download this. And here in Chrome, it says download. Okay, perfect, I download this, open in and I can see this now open in my downloads. This is the file, this is the folder from Chrome. So if you now go to DaVinci, you have to select it from here. If you don't find this, the easier way is actually just opening the file and say share. And now you can share this safe video and now it will be also in your photos. So now I have here the video file from Pikachu. Okay, let's go back to DaVinci Resolve and now we can bring this from our photos into DaVinci Resolve and I can place this here on top of my of my screen. I can change the size, let's say, let's do it like this. But now we have the problem, I have this white background, right? So how get you can you get rid of this? There's a couple of ways in DaVinci Resolve how to do this. I even have a video how to change green screen on my channel, but I will show you now one way how this works in the Fusion tab. In the Fusion tab, you can basically, if you're here in the Fusion tab, you can hit Shift and Space to create a new um, feature, like a new note and we look for ultra key. If you don't have a keyboard, you can also just come up here to effects and you can also search the effects here and look for ultra, ultra keyer. Double click and then you have it. Now open the inspector, I can close the effects tab here. And the way it works is you have to select the color of the, the one color that you wanna delete and then it will search through every frame and it will delete this one color from that image. So we go in here in the picker and we pick white and now all of the white is gone but not all of the white you see now it's very fuzzy because it has some red and blue in this white as well that's not pure white so the way you can work with this is you go in here with the red levels and you play around with the red level until it's like this and the green level and this is now good enough for my gifts i mean gifts don't have to be perfect so if i go back now in here i can basically just copy now this clip and place it behind this one and now this is looped. And I have my Pikachu, my GIF inside of DaVinci Resolve. So this is how you work with GIFs inside of DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Last question. I actually want to buy an iPad version of DaVinci Resolve, but right now what stops me that it's not finished product like PC or Mac. I'm using PC DaVinci Studio right now. So what do you suggest? To buy iPad version Studio or not? Okay, let's address a couple of things. Yes, a couple of things are still buggy. Yes, we don't have all of the pages like, officially. But let's let's address one thing that is amazing, which we don't have, for example, with Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro comes with this limited version. That's not Final Cut Pro. I mean, I mean, in my opinion, it's not even final because it's not the final software you use. And it's not Pro because it lacks the features of Pro. Okay, but enough for, from Final Cut Pro. The cool thing is we see that DaVinci and Blackmagic, they want to bring everything that we have on desktop also to the iPad. And currently there's a lot of features that do work. Yes, there's specific things that don't work. The, the Fusion page has the biggest issues and the Fairlight page, but they are coming. And the studio version, for example, on the iPad is way cheaper than on the, I mean, come on, let's, let's talk about this first. Compared to all the high-end editing software out there. DaVinci is the cheapest, even if you consider this, the, the price of the studio. It's cheap if you compare that. And the reason why is Blackmagic doesn't make the money on that software. They make the money because they have the hardware, 
the cameras and everything, the equipment. So if you come into the ecosystem of black magic, they will make the money with something different. It's not the same with Adobe. Adobe has the software as their core product. So they have to charge you more. So just thinking about the price, if you do it professionally, the price shouldn't stop you. If you're just an amateur and you're thinking about it, the way I see it is use the free version because the free version has like 90 to 95% of the features that you need. And you can do a lot of stuff in the free version. And it works like since five months, all of my videos are done on iPad, DaVinci Resolve. It works. I rarely go back to my desktop version because I can do most of the stuff that is necessary for my business on DaVinci Resolve. So talking about the studio version, if you come into an issue where you need the features of the studio version, like let's say for example, the external feed clean out. So if you have a monitor and you want to use your iPad, there is a feature that is only in the studio version to have an external monitor and you have the clean feed out feature or the voice isolation. I use the voice isolation all the time because it's a very cool AI feature that helps you to reduce noise. And that feature alone is amazing and it works on the iPad. So the studio version has a couple of things that make your editing more like it's, it improves your editing, okay? And the way I see it is when you start using some of those features, you can thinking about upgrading because it's just a one-time fee. And now compare that the almost $350 on the desktop. Here you pay, I think in Europe, 120 euros and in dollars it's like 99 or 97. And But you pay it once and all the upgrades and updates that come in the future, you don't have to pay for that again. So I see it that way, probably in the future, if this one would be all of the functions available like the desktop, which will come, they will increase the price. So now you get a cheaper price because the product is not completely done, but you will end up with a complete product in the future. That's how I see it. I hope this video was helpful. The Q&A series works like this. Every Friday I answer your questions. So you, you write your questions down and I will answer them in the next Friday video. And I hope you liked this video. So hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong. And for everyone who wants to take DaVinci serious, we have a masterclass where you learn everything about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. It's the most dedicated and most stuff put in for the iPad at the moment. You learn almost everything. And uh, yeah, it's from beginner to pro. You will find a link in the description. We see us in the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.